it has a secret ingredient that I think makes it amazing. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. Everyone should make it. They should make it and they should make it right. You can also use this as good stress relief. If maybe say your children have been fighting, ask me how I know. I don't know the proper term y'all. I am not schooled at this. Easy, seriously, this is not hard. Shake your cube steak. You can sing if you want. If it makes it more fun, you can do that. Let's do this. Let's make some chicken fried steak. Hey y'all. Okay, we are back in the kitchen and tonight I am making one of our family's favorites, which is cube steak. Actually, chicken fried steak is what I call it. This is the pre-cooked version. Um, chicken fried steak used to kind of intimidate me. And even the first few times I made it, I was like, this is a lot of work. It's actually not a lot of work. I've done it enough now where I realize it's not a lot of work. It's very good. And I think everyone should make it. They should make it and they should make it right. And I, for years, have followed this one recipe. I don't actually look at the recipe anymore. I just kind of do it. But it has a secret ingredient that I think makes it amazing. And I'm going to tell you what that is. So, let's do this. Let's make some chicken fried steak. I don't know why it's called chicken fried steak. I guess because it fries up kind of like chicken would. But it's obviously not chicken. It's beef. Yeah. Anyway. Somebody's gonna tell me. <laughs> Somebody in the comments is gonna tell me if it's something different than what I just said. And that would be great, I would appreciate it. All right, I have actually done this on my other channel, on my farming channel, but I'm gonna do it here specifically on my cooking channel and let it, just let it sit here as well as over there. Yeah, okay. And I might do it different than I did over there because I don't even remember what I did, but the way I do it here is the way I'm gonna do it tonight. <laughs> Let's go. So I have a pack of chicken fried, of chicken fried steak, of cube steak, 1.05 pounds. So basically a pound of cube steak is what you're going to need. I'm going to cut it open and I'm going to cut it. I actually, sometimes I will do it with the big pieces, but they're so big. So what I've started doing is cutting it into smaller pieces, like half, like cutting it in half, each big piece in half. So we have smaller pieces. You don't have to. That's my husband on the radio. Yes, I'm here. Tell Rash to come up here and get me the bond. Ten four. Yeah. All right. The farmer's home and he needs a ride. Okay. Anyway, we're getting back to chicken fried steak. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cut these in half. See, they're like yay big. Now they're gonna be this big. Four pieces, so we'll actually end up with eight pieces. Math is, math. I'm not good at math, but I can do that math. Okay. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is sprinkle them with some seasoned salt. This is what I've always done. And now that I have musket powder in my life, which I didn't used to have, I'm gonna sprinkle some of that on there too. It's going to be good. I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. See how that works? Easy peasy. Okay. Okay, for the next part, you're going to need a Ziploc gallon bag. You don't have to. You could use a plate, but I... My potatoes are boiling over. Um, I prefer to use a Ziploc. You're going to put some all-purpose flour, like that much. I don't know, y'all. That's a cup or more. And then the secret ingredient is saltines. Saltines. You take your saltine sleeve. Um, I'm just gonna use the whole sleeve, but you don't necessarily have to use a whole sleeve, but I'm just being lazy. And you're gonna break it up. So the easiest thing to do is to get it started really loud. Get it started, crushing it up in the bag, and then you can crush it up more 
in the other bag if you need to. And then sometimes what happens is the bottom blows out and you make a big mess. So I'm gonna put it over the bag. Yeah, like this. Sorry, I didn't get my tripod out. I just I'm kinda I'm kinda going fast tonight. But I still wanted to do this, so here we are. Okay, so you're gonna put that in there and you're gonna crunch it up some more. Try to get it good and smashed. Try to get them smashed as good as you can. All right, so I'm gonna work on that. You can also use this as good stress relief. If maybe, say, your children have been fighting. Ask me how I know. Um, you can do that. Yeah, I'm not beating the meat. I'm beating the um, crackers for the meat. The meat's already beat, so that's the good thing about cube steak. Now that's good and crushed up. Um, you could put some extra like salt and pepper in here, some paprika. I'm just gonna put a little more musket powder in here. And then, let me show you what's next. Okay, now what I've got is two eggs and a little bit of milk. And this is gonna be your egg wash. It's not really an egg wash. What do you call it? It's for dipping, for coating. I don't know the proper term, y'all. I am not schooled at this. Anyway, it's milk and eggs. Milk and eggs, milk and eggs. And what we're gonna do is a double dip. It's okay to double dip for this recipe. Promise. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the meat. We're gonna coat all the meat first with the flour mixture. Then we're gonna dip it in the egg mixture. Then we're gonna coat it again in the flour mixture and it's gonna be ready to fry, okay? Easy, seriously, this is not hard. Just take a few pieces at a time. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your cube steak. Shake your cube steak. You can sing if you want. If it makes it more fun, you can do that. All right. And then shake it all. Put it on a plate. Take it out of the bag. Put, put the rest in. Shake it up. This is also stress relief. This is just really, this is just a lot going on tonight that's good for stress relief. And then you get to eat it, which is even more stress relief because this, y'all, is comfort food at its finest. It is. Okay, now you're gonna take your meat, you're gonna dip it in the egg. This, this does get a little messy, okay? And then you're gonna put that, I do this one at a time, back in your bag and shake that up. Okay, sometimes I'll take it and I'll like pat it. That's what I'm doing in here, even though you can't see it, to make sure it's coated really good. And there you go. We're gonna do that a few more times and we're ready to fry. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this on medium high. I have got my, mm, my medium sized skillet. This is my 12 inch skillet and I've just covered the bottom with oil. Peanut, no, it's not, it's not peanut. What is it, canola oil? Use whatever kind of oil you want. <laughs> just use vegetable oil. And I've got my meat here ready to go. And once that gets hot, we're just gonna fry them, flip them, put them in, flip them, take them out. And then we're gonna make gravy. And we're gonna have mashed potatoes here in a minute. And we're gonna be set. Okay, I know the grease is hot. I just pulled that hot cobbler out of the oven. That recipe will also be on here. I don't know which one of these is gonna come first. You're just gonna have to stay tuned. Yeah, if it's ready, I'll I'll give you the link. All right, um, first, anyway, here we go. Look at that, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. I really wanted to get them all in here, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Shucks, I should have used the Mac Daddy one, the big one. That's all right. We'll just do two batches. Okay, so they're gonna cook. Let them cook a few minutes, then I'll flip them. And then, what I like to do is line, full line a uh, baking sheet and put a rack on it. And then when they come off, I put them on here and put them in a 200 degree oven. My oven is hot though because it had that cobbler in it. So. Um, I put them in there until I get the gravy done, and that way they don't get soggy. 
Nobody wants soggy fried meat, okay? And this is the key to that. The key to keeping it from getting soggy is to keep it in a very low temp, warm oven until you're ready to eat it. So 200 degrees, okay? Trust me, do it. Okay, let's check them. All right, I think they're ready to flip. Once they get kind of golden brown, see there? I'm gonna flip them over. Let them cook another couple minutes. Those might not have been quite ready. Okay, I'll let you stay over here for a second. It's all good. Okay, these are ready to come out. So I'm gonna put them over here. Like that. Mmm, it smells really good, y'all. I flip those. I'm gonna let them cook another minute or two. We're gonna add these two little loners that got left out. Let the grease heat back up. And put these in the oven. Okay, all the chicken fried steak is in the oven, staying warm. There we go. The beef. The beef. It's always a cut above the rest. Yeah. Okay, uh, anyway, I digress. Um, now what we have is some very hot grease, right? Very hot. So, I'm gonna get a measuring cup and I'm gonna pour said hot grease into there. I'm gonna leave some in here though and some of the drippings and that's gonna be our gravy. And I did that one handed and I made a mess. But anyway, you see I poured a lot of it out. I left some in there though. And now I'm gonna add milk and some flour and we're gonna have gravy. And that's that. Well, probably a little salt. We'll see. Okay, I ended up pouring a little more out. I had too much grease in there. This is just hit or miss, y'all. But it always works out. I don't, I don't know measurements on this. I just pour milk until it looks right and I just add some flour and I start whisking and we have gravy. That's how it works for me. Okay. Ooh, hot stuff, y'all, hot stuff. All right, I'm gonna pour in about that much milk. Pour it about halfway. I got, you gotta leave it on. You gotta have some heat. And this is what I like to use. Hold on. I like to use this little whisk. It's my favorite. All right. I got to put some flour in here. What I like to do for my flour, I'm sure there is another way, but this is what I do. I, <laughs> I use this thing. I think it's actually a tea strainer. Oh, is that old flour? Probably. Whatever. It's been washed. All right. I take it and I put some flour in it and I dust it like that. And that way, it just really helps keep it from getting lumpy. It really does, I promise. This is just something I've learned. Trial and error. And this works for me, usually. So we'll hope it works since I'm actually videoing it. You know how that goes. Or maybe you don't, but let me tell you, sometimes it doesn't work out. It is though, it's working. See all those little lumps are going away. We don't want lumpy gravy. I make lumpy mashed potatoes, but I don't want lumpy gravy. Mm -mm. So I'm gonna add a little bit more and get it thick. Then I'm gonna taste it. And I'm gonna add some salt probably. Be very careful when tasting hot gravy or you will burn your mouth. Ask me how I know. Mm. Or your finger. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely gonna wanna add some salt. I actually like to add more of the seasoned salt. I love seasoned salt, I really do. So that's what I'm gonna do. See how pretty that is? It's just thickening up. I'm just gonna dust it with some seasoned salt and I'm gonna stir it some more. Basic, oh my gosh. Bonnie, you okay? That didn't sound very good, did it? Um. Anywho. We're gonna stir this up and we should be right. I really think we're gonna be right now. Turn that way down. I still gotta make mashed potatoes. I'm s this is so much going on. A little more salt. Okay, that's it. That's gonna be it. It's gonna be perfect. Okay, if you don't have seasoned salt, you can use salt. You could add some more pepper. Shoot, I could have put some musket powder in there. I've never done it, but it would be good. Um, okay. 
I gotta turn this off. I gotta make my mashed potatoes. And then we gotta eat supper. Yeah. Well, I've shown this before too, but this is how I make mashed potatoes. This is actually, y'all. I'm using half and half. Do you understand? You need to understand that if you use half and half or even whipping cream, a little bit of whipping cream, I'm talking so low with your mashed potatoes, you're gonna thank me. Yeah. Um, so I've been putting some cream cheese in them. I don't know if I'm gonna do that tonight, but I'm gonna use half and half butter and salt. It's, it's where it's at. Trust me. And here we are again with our stress relief. So much mashing, mashing, mashing and smashing going on tonight. Uh, this is just how I like, this is how I like to make mashed potatoes. I might add some actual milk. Also haven't added salt yet, that's not good. Lots of salt. Potatoes need salt. They need lots of salt. When I say lots, like lots, they need lots of salt. I mean, in my kitchen they do, anyway. And there we have it, y'all. Chicken fried steak, gravy, green beans, mashed potatoes, and cobbler that I had to taste. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's edible. <laughs> it's more than edible. It's delicious. Okay, so... I hope you will try that. I hope you'll try the chicken fried steak. I hope you'll try the cobbler. I will link to it. I think I'm going to put it up first. So, yeah, let me put a link. How's that go? Here. I think it'll be here. Anywho, check them both out. Let me know what you think. And let's get cooking, y'all.